So in today's lesson, we're going to continue to talk about nomenclature, but we're going to extend that to some more complex compounds uh, called the ternary compounds or tertiary compounds. And so unlike the binary compounds, you should expect to see more than two atoms um, of, dif of elements, uh, of different elements um, contained in these compounds. So we need to know how to name those as well. And so you should remember from last year, um, what a polyatomic ion is, sometimes called a polyatomic radical. And poly, the, the prefix poly means many, and atomic uh, meaning atom. So though, here is the big list. And so these are um, some of our sort of common, I would say, common polyatomic ions, ones that we see fairly frequently in compounds. Uh, and so it, it will be your job this um this year to memorize these and so this is a good opportunity for you to create some cue cards for yourselves uh, or perhaps to create a quizlet for yourself uh, in order to find ways to memorize these. Um, so um, <clears throat> here they are. So hydroxide you may remember from last year just remember it's OH with a negative one charge um, our ammonium is the only positive polyatomic ion we're going to see today in the list. Please know also that this is a condensed list and that there are many, many, many more polyatomic ions that are out there. Um, ammonium is one that comes up a lot. Uh, and not to be confused with ammonia. So ammonia is NH3. It's the common name for uh, nitrogen trihydride. So just remember that that's ammonia and not ammonium. Oops. Ammonia. So, um, okay, so some others that we need to know. Um, so acetate, C2H3O2 with a negative one charge. Make sure you get those charges right because, of course, when we perform the crossover rule, that becomes really important. Um, so hydrogen carbonate, sometimes known as bicarbonate. Um, and then hydrogen sulfate, sometimes also known as bisulfate. So we'll write that in. So you'll no notice then maybe this trend that the prefix bi tends to mean that you've added a hydrogen along with some other polyatomic ion. Uh, all right, so carrying down the list, okay, peroxide, so the per and then oxide, so there it is, cyanide, oxalate, C2O4, 2 negative, and we're not going to reduce that to lowest terms because, of course, we have two non-metals together, so that indicates that they're exactly two and exactly four uh, of each of those elements present in that polyatomic ion chromate, and then dichromate. So again, that is a short list uh, that um, contains some of the most common polyatomic ions that we're likely to see. We are, however, going to extend this list. So you may be thinking, well, what about some of the ions that we saw last year, like phosphate, nitrate, and those? Well, those were, will be coming up. Those are special ions that contain oxygen, and they're sort of a class of their own. So we're going to have a different discussion about those. So I thought next we could go through some examples um, just to get you practicing and reminding you how to use these polyatomic ions appropriately. So the first example that I have here is sodium hydroxide. And so as soon as I see that there's, um, you know, as my anion... Or, or cation for that matter, that I see that there's something that doesn't really, can't be found on the periodic table, then I need to remember that there's a polyatomic ion in this compound and that it's a ternary or tertiary compound. So let's go about this. I'm going to use the same principles as I have before with the crossover rule. So I have sodium, my sodium ion, oopsies, um, always has a positive one charge. And now I'm going to remember that hydroxide has a negative one charge. So one thing that I usually instruct students about when creating these formulas is to put brackets around the polyatomic ion and to consider that polyatomic ion as a, as a piece unto itself, as a chunk. And then I'm going to cross my charges down 
and outside those brackets so that the charge on my one ion applies to the whole other polyatomic ion. So when I write that in whole, in this case I would have Na bracket OH bracket and then a 1 and a 1. And of course, it's important to know that just like in math, you know, if I have a 1 outside of a bracket, sort of like um, if I had like 1 times x plus 3, bracket. I know that the brackets aren't really necessary and so I can sort of just write that as x plus 3 removing the brackets entirely. So uh, I'm going to do kind of the same idea here where I'm actually going to rewrite this without those brackets as NaOH simply. Okay so uh, let's move on to a second example. All right, so let's take a look at um, a second example here. You might want to try, um, you might want to try to do these these three examples on your own, and then pause, like pause the video to do that, and then resume when you're ready. All right, so um, let's take a look at this next example: iron three acetate. So in this case, um, the formula, the name itself, is telling me that I have iron with a three plus charge. And so because it has a 3 plus charge indicated, that tells me which of the two possible charges for iron are going to be in this compound. So I, that's easy peasy, I just write that out. But then I look up and I see acetate. So acetate, again, is a polyatomic ion. So I'm going to remember that it's C2H3O2 with a negative 1 charge. I'm going to put a bracket around my polyatomic ion and then cross those charges down. So the 3 going to go outside the brackets over here and the one is going to be written, not really written, but understood to be there for my ion. So I'm going to go F E C, oops, bracket C2 H3 O2 and I'm going to squeeze in the little three outside that's crossed down. All right, uh, <clears throat> let's try the next example. So I have ammonium, and ammonium is NH4 with a plus one charge. Now, it's a cation, but it's a polyatomic cation, so I'm just going to put my brackets around, remembering that um, I'm going to consider that as one whole piece when cross doing my crossover rule. And then dichromate is C2, sorry, Cr2O7 with a 2 minus charge. So this is a case where I have two polyatomic ions. Um, so am I going to put a bracket around those as well? And now I'm going to perform my crossover rule. So the plus 1 is going to go out here, and the 2 minus is going to go over here beside ammonium, which is going to result in NH4 bracket 2, and then Cr2O7, and um, bracket 1, but of course, because the 1 is outside that bracket, it's really not necessary, so I'm just going to get rid of it as well as the brackets. And so there's my formula. Let's try uh, the last example. Here to do that. So if calcium, and calcium has a 2 plus charge, and oxalate has the formula C2O4 with a 2 negative charge, I'm going to consider that as one whole entity, then perform my crossover rule, the 2 and the 2. Um, and so that will result in CA2 bracket C2O4 bracket 2. But I see here that I still have an ionic compound, and so my ionic compound um, still needs to be reduced to lowest terms, and I can see that I have this 2 here and this 2 here. So those can be reduced, and so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to cancel them out. 2 to 2 ratio is the same as a 1 to 1 ratio, which results in my final formula being CaC2O4. And some people often think, well, what about this 2 right here and this 4? But unfortunately, there's a 1 here. And so, well, not unfortunately, it just is what it is. So I really have a ratio between three things, not just two elements. So a 1 to 2 to 4 ratio is, in fact, in lowest terms. All right, now we're ready to move on to the next part of our lesson. So <clears throat> now I want to um, 
talk to you about the oxygen containing radicals. And those obviously are going to be um, often used and they're obviously going to contain oxygen in varying amounts. So you can see all of these from nitrate, sulfate, carbonate, chlorate, phosphate, and manganate, that they all contain oxygen in different amounts. Uh, another way to identify them is because they have this 8 ending, and that's going to become important um, as we move on. So take a minute to pause the video and write these down. They should be familiar from last year. Um, So you may also remember from last year uh, the Nick the Camel trick. So Nick the Camel uh, must eat clams for supper in Phoenix. And so the trick was, well, if we look at each of these words here, you'll notice that I've highlighted the N and the C, the M, the CL, the S, and the P. Uh, because each of those words is going to provide a clue to help you remember uh, the formula for the polyatomic ion. So, for instance, if we look at Nick, the word Nick, Nick contains one vowel, the I. And so the fact that it contains one vowel tells you that it has a charge of negative one. So, in other words, the vowels are going to indicate the neg what the charge is on the polyatomic ion. Okay, and the number of consonants are going to indicate how many oxygen atoms. So, for example, the word Nick contains the N, the C, and the K, so three vowels sorry, three consonants, so that indicates three oxygen atoms. I'm going to do another example just to make sure that you understand this idea. So, for example, the word camel. Camel has one, two vowels, which tells me that the charge for carbonate is negative two. So I'm going to put a C there. And the fact that there are one, two, three consonants tells me that there are three oxygen atoms. And lo and behold, that is the formula that I have for carbonate. And so we can apply those rules to each and every one of the oxygen-containing radicals that are in this list. You'll also notice that I've called these our base radicals, and there's a reason for that. These ions, these oxygen-containing radicals, form the basis for a whole other set of polyatomic ions, and that's what we're going to look at next. Okay, so take a minute to write down this whole list by pausing the video. Um, and so derivations of the base radicals. So you'll notice here that in the middle, I'm just going to highlight my sulfate. There's sulfate, and it is what we call the base radical for this set. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write out the formula for sulfate, okay, using supper, you know, from Nick the Camel. It's SO4 with a 2 minus charge. Now, I can get the formula for all of these other radicals that are in this list by simply, um, by simply looking at the ending and applying a set of rules. So you'll notice that my base, all of my base radicals have this 8 ending, okay. Well, if I were to take the formula for the polyatomic ion containing one less oxygen, it would give me sulfite. So sulfite, the ite ending, indicates that I have the base radical formula, but I'm going to take away one oxygen from that. So in other words, instead of SO4, I'm going to have SO3. Now, the charge will remain as 2 minus, and the charges will never change. If I go ahead and I take away one uh, more oxygen, so in other words, two oxygens from my base radical sulfate, then I will end up with SO2 with a 2 minus. And so if I recognize that, then I know how to name the associated polyatomic ion hypoite, so hyposulfite in this case. Now, if I notice that I have a polyatomic ion uh, that has one more oxygen than my base radical, so for example, SO5 with a 2 minus charge, then I know that the name for that is going to have the prefix per and the suffix or the ending 8. So per 8 or per sulfate in this case because sulf sulfate is my base radical. 
All right, so that's a lot. So I'd like to practice this a couple times with you um, by using it with the base radical carbonate first and then phosphate. So I would like you to pause the video at this point and give this a whirl with carbonate and then we'll take it up and then we'll do the same process with phosphate. All right, so let's take a look at this. So I'm going to start with carbonate. So carbonate, oopsies, carbonate is, of course, my base radical. Okay, it's my base. And so I'm going to use the um, Nick the Camel. So CO3 with a 2 minus is the formula for carbonate. So now I can kind of set up all the other base radicals. I'm going to start with... Um, CO4. In other words, I'm adding one more oxygen to my base radical. So if I add one more base radical to, or one more oxygen to my base radical, it gets the prefix per in the ending eight. So in this case, it would be per carbon eight. <clears throat> All right, next. Um, I'm going to remove one oxygen from my base. CO2. 2 minus, and that's going to give me the ending ite, you'll remember. So carbonite. And lastly, I'm going to go ahead and take another uh, oxygen away from my base radical so for a total of two oxygens removed. And now I get the suffix hypo. In the ending ite, so in this case it's hypocarbonite. So that is that. Take a minute to pause the video and try phosphate out. All right, now let's try phosphate. Um, so phosphate is of course my base radical, so PO4 with a 3 minus charge, and that's my base. And so that's FOSS, and of course it has that ending 8. And so <clears throat> uh, now I'm going to you know, extend upon that. So if I add one more oxygen to my base radical, I would have 5 oxygens. So PO5 with a 3 minus charge. So the ending now, sorry, the suffix changes, the prefix changes, not the suffix. So that would give me per 8, so in this case per phosphate. Uh, Alright, next I have um, the possibility of encountering the ion that has one less oxygen than my base, and that would get the ending ite, so in this case phosphite. And lastly, I have the possibility of encountering the polyatomic radical PO2, 3 minus, and I just noticed that I wrote 2 minus up here, and I should not have, that should be 3 minus. Um, and so if I do that, then the prefix changes to hypo, and the ending changes to ite. So hypo, phos, fight. And so that is it. Hopefully you did okay with that. Um, I'm going to just try a few other random examples just to solidify these examples. All right, so here are three examples of derivations of our oxygen-containing radicals, of our base radicals. I would like you to pause the video, try to name these three polyatomic ions, and then resume the video when you're ready in order to, uh, in order to check your answer. All right, so let's take a look at this. So first of all, um, ClO with a minus one charge. So I'm quickly remembering clams, and clams has the formula ClO3 minus. So since the, uh, the radical that's in question here has two less oxygens than my base radical, it's going to get the prefix hypo and the suffix or ending ite, so hypochlor. Eight. Hopefully you did okay with that. Let's look at the next one. 
So in my brain, I'm thinking, well, what is the base radical, uh, oxygen-containing radical, uh, that involves nitrogen? And that's nitrate. And nitrate has the formula, so Nick is NO3 with a minus 1 charge. And so I know that in this case, I have one less oxygen than my base radical. So the ending or the suffix is it. So nitrite is the correct for a name for this particular ion. Let's do the last one. So in this case, I have manganese, and so that's the must. So MnO4 with a negative one charge. Oops, pardon me. MnO3 with a negative one charge is my base radical. So I have one more oxygen so that tell, than my base. So that means the prefix is per and the ending is eight. So this is per manganate. So there are three um, examples um, of how it is that I'm going to come up with a name given the base radical. So here are three more examples that I would like for you to try um, in order to master this, uh, these polyatomic ions and the derivations of uh, those oxygen-containing radicals. So the, here are some names, um, and it's going to be quite common in this course for you to have to take these names and convert them into formulas so that we can go ahead and do several other processes with them. So it's really important um, in order to be able to um, finish pr word problems that you be able to convert into uh, formulas and correct formulas. So let's take a look at the first one here. Pause the video, try these three examples, and then when you're ready to come back, then continue on with, um, with the solutions to these. All right. So um, when I look at this, I can see that sodium has the formula. The sodium ion is Na+. Plus. Sulfite, uh, the it ending tells me that I have one less than my base radical sulfate. And it has a 2 minus charge. So now I'm going to cross... But it put brackets around that base radical and cross over my charges. So the resulting formula will be Na2SO3. All right, next. So I have ammonium. So ammonium has a formula NH4 plus, and perchlorate has the formula ClO4. with a negative one charge. So both of these are polyatomic ions, so I'm going to put my brackets around them, but I see that the charge on each is one, so the final formula, I'm going to write that over here, should be NH4ClO4. And again, I'm not going to reduce to lowest terms because this Cl has a one, so really it is in lowest terms, four to one to four. I can't reduce that any further, so NH4 ClO4 is my formula. Okay, lastly, I can't forget about some of the other rules that I already know about chemical nomenclature. And so this cupric right here tells me that I'm operating with copper with a the higher of its two possible charges, so with a 2 plus charge. Hyponitrite means that I have um, a nitrogen-containing, oxygen-containing radical with two less than my base nitrate. So that should be NO simply. Um, and that has a negative one charge. So I'm going to place brackets around my polyatomic ion and then cross these down. So Cu and then bracket NO bracket 2. So you're going to be getting um, some practice sheets for these in the next day or two. Um, well, all that you're going to be quizzed on tomorrow are only these polyatomic ions and the derivations of the base radicals, not what we've just done here. Okay, so your job for tomorrow's class is simply to um, memorize the polyatomic ion list, the original one with acetate and peroxide and chromate, dichromate, etc., as well as our oxygen containing radicals, the Nick the Camel ones, and also all of our you know, our ite, hypoite, and per-8 polyatomic ions.
but you won't be quizzed on naming compounds such as those provided in these three examples.